All right, so we're going to fill this out. Compressor, inducer, exducer measurements, and wastegate hole diameter. So, numbers so far, very similar. So we calculated the trim, inducer squared over exducer squared times 100 of both compressors. So that comes out to 48 trim for the eBay. We need to look up what they're advertising. What as. they advertise them as, still, and then 53 trim for the compressor of the IHI, and we did not calculate the turbine trim, but they're both within like a tenth of an inch, and a uh, common nomenclature is to refer to the millimeter inducer of the compressor and the so that's the smaller measurement of the compressor and the smaller measurement of the turbine so in this case and that's in millimeters so we converted these so this is a 52 56 and a 51 54 so next up are these two whole sets which are obviously going to be a bit bigger but either way i mean these two would really work well in their a place of each other. I mean, they're very interchangeable for a given engine size. I mean, we should mention that this is probably, what, 1.5 liter to three liter range. I think that's what they advertise those eBay T3, T4s as. Yep. So. And it does perform well. It does, it does, it does. It yeah. Very... I haven't removed this yet, so just hang on to it, hook it. works there we go okay so one side popped and usually there, there it, goes. it goes now it's sliding you lift it up and boom you need a special tool so just modified those vice grips to do it this one's gonna be harder because it's got the wastegate I gotta pull the wastegate off but either way we'll check out the 351 first the big boy the big boy <laughs> That is a beast, man. Look at that beast. So here's the roll pins I was telling you about. I have to take these out, otherwise you can't clock it. Pinch that thing out of there. I need the side cutters to do that, but there's a roll pin on the turbine right there, and there's a roll pin on the compressor that keep it clocked. So if you wanna change the center section orientation, you just pull those two out and then you can put it wherever you want. Uh, next up. Does the 351 fit into an HE 341 turbine housing? <laughs> it looks like the outlet's the same. Yeah, it's very, very similar yeah. to turbine housing. I didn't look at the, I know they're different, though, because of the wastegate hole. But I think the turbine might be the same. Let's see here. This is definitely the 341 housing. It's got that pin in it still, so it wants to be lined up to the pin. Ooh, I don't know. Oh? I think it works. I think you can drop an HE 351 into a 341 housing. The only difference, the flapper looks to be the same. Yeah, but those holes are... But that thing, this one's tiny. We'll measure them. There's another thing. The 351, look at the flange thickness difference. So that is one difference between them. And in my case, my bolts weren't, weren't, wouldn't have been long enough to go through this housing. Yeah. So the 341 is a better choice for me because it has a smaller flange. Mm -hmm. But internally, besides that casting difference, I mean, that, I guess that kind of tells you right there that that is a different, different housing. But, you know, you look at the inside of this thing, and as far as I can tell, it's pretty well identical. The casting number on the HE351 is 4035996. The HE341 is 3593344. So they have different casting numbers. The compressor housing has like the anti-surge stuff. So like this, oh yeah. Even though this is significantly larger, right? The flows might be different because it loses a lot of efficiency using the anti-surge. The reason being because there's a pathway to the tip, so it in effect lowers the height of the wheel, right? Mm -hmm. It has a lower bite. It's like 1.22 inches, I would say, and then 0.91. Yeah, that's pretty A quarter big. inch depth difference, but like you said, a lot of it is in that, right there, the tip of that wheel is in that anti-surge groove, so it's not really 
flow area, right? Yeah, so you make that sacrifice or you make that trade off. You have to go larger to compensate for the right. lower efficiency. So, inducer and exducer. Next, we'll calculate the trim. So, so far, the GM5 actually has the highest trim. So, largest it does. Trim turbo. But we know the trim doesn't tell you the whole story because, like you said, the eBay T3, T4, the big boy HE351 that we know for a fact can do 450 horsepower. Yeah. Reliably. Have the same trim. But I would say that the eBay T3, T4 is good for maybe 300 reliably, depending on what engine you put it on. If you put it on the wrong engine, it's going to be good for less. Yeah. But the trim doesn't tell you the whole story because we have a quarter inch on both inducer and exducer versus that. But you know, seeing these numbers, me personally, it, it's a little discouraging because I go through all this work Yeah. and you look at it on, well, we're not done, but we're not. <laughs> even if it was the 351, it's like, the waist gate's smaller, so it's gonna creep. The trim's the same. You know, it's got a couple extra blades, so it'll like more boost. We like, we know that. Mm -hmm. But it demands a little more oil because it's got a bigger drain. You know, a tenth of an inch, roughly. If I'm upgrading from two inch to two and a half inch intercooler piping, is that gonna change the charge temps? Maybe, maybe not. I mean, you've got more surface area exposed to the atmosphere to dissipate heat than you do with a smaller pipe. So theoretically, there's a possibility that, you know, we'd see lower charge temps off just that, but maybe another degree or a couple degrees. I'll be interested to see, because the with those turbos on 20 PSI, I would see 200 degrees, over 200 degrees with the 351, and up to 200 degrees with the 302. Yeah, I love that design. Easy. Yeah, now, do what I did yesterday, go put this somewhere in the middle of the floor so I can kick it and bend the wheel. Two point oh wait, two point six or point two six five point two three five. So it's thirty thousandths bigger shaft on the whole set. Not much. What do I think it is? Well, based on the fact that the difference is smaller, I'm gonna say that it's a higher trim number than forty eight. Do you think it's higher than the GM five? Ooh, that's a good question. What's the number to beat? Fifty three? Fifty three. GM's 2.75, 2.01, three quarters of an inch. It's, oh man, I don't know, because they're squared. I'm gonna go with like 52. That's exactly what it is. Really? 52. 52. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I pulled all those pieces out of the air filter. I took the air filter, dumped it out, and all kinds of compressor fins fell out, and the compressor, I was like, where's the compressor at? And there it was. Shot out the other way. <laughs> Went the wrong direction. It did. Actually, you got that is the best way for it to go. Uh, yeah, <laughs> it is. Well, when I saw the damage at first, I was like, it had to have eaten it. It's inside. <laughs> and it littered that whole charge pipe just full. You should have seen the oil that came out of it, though. Because I blew up four of those turbines, and when they blow up, like all the thrust washer and all the journal bearing material goes down into the pan. So I was draining gold out of that engine. <laughs> it's like, good. This isn't good. This is a lot of brass coming out of here. It's like gold flaked oil. At least it I bet that pan's full of it. <laughs> Gonna add one more to it, the WH1C. Oh, I haven't seen one of these in a decade. Ooh, look at that, baby. Oh, they're beautiful. Flow areas are really small, they're thin. Yeah. Yeah, so that's why this housing, even though it's huge, it doesn't really flow as much. It's making me nervous hanging that thing like that. <laughs> drop it on its wheel. <laughs> Got a good hold on it. Break its nose. All right, let's get some numbers. Let's get numbers. Let's check it out. Let's see how good it is. The WH1C, the old school technology versus the new one. Can it compete? Now, what, what year was this me? What year was this released? WH1C? Yeah. WH1C, I think it was 89 to 93, but only this some is, of them. This is like the same as the GM5, though. Yeah, it's the same era, exactly. It's significantly more advanced, I would say. Well, it has anti surge and. I mean, hopefully that's a good good brand. I mean, they're both built for diesels, though, so you yeah. have to figure that the castings are going to be thick. They're going to be meant for being in boost all-time bearings. are going to be good. I mean, you'd have to expect that anyways. But, but I would say that the whole set's probably a little more industrial, if we have to be honest. All right, 2.20. No way. Oh, man. You knew it. You got a calibrated eye. 
3.21. It is right in no the middle. No way! It is right in the middle. Dude. <laughs> Bang for the buck. I think the eBay T3, T4 still wins. If yeah. you put it on the right engine, you know. Yeah. And you have the proper. Don't let it surge. And you don't put the wrong oil feed line on it. Those are things you have to look out for. But otherwise, man, I mean, the housings, yeah, they can crack. I saw it happen. But even though I blew four of them, I mean, they lasted a long time before that happened. They're, they're rugged turbos for sure. They respond really well because they fall right in line on the size that they should. Ready for the trim? Trim. You ready? Where do you, what do you guess the trim is? It's exactly the same as the 351. It's 48. Forty-seven. It's a forty-seven trim. Forty-seven. Forty-six point nine seven. So that right there tells you something. The turbo with the lowest trim compressor actually would support the highest horsepower. Can we agree on that? I would agree with that. I mean, maybe the HE three hundred and fifty one might edge it out just because it's a little bigger on the inducer and a little bigger on the exducer. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, if that was a 48, they'd be exactly the same. So It's very, very, very close. I mean, the only thing that wins for the WH1C is the exhaust. If it wasn't for this turbine wheel, you know, I don't know really what you'd be working with. But then again, you'd have to think that this thing, you know, that these technologies can't do more with less. Yeah. And that is entirely possible based on the housing design and other factors. I'm going to turn it up until they're done. Until they're maxed, you know? And hopefully they don't end up like these eBay turbos. Crank the boost up. Send it till you bent it. That's what happened to me already. Bending rods. I'm trying to not unbend it. Okay, so this might provide a higher peak power. This is better for if you're all around. Like it should be a little bit more responsive, but won't supply that peak that you want. Maybe. There's only one way to find out, Tanner. Some testing. That's it. <laughs>